So what is AFR and Lambda tuning? Why choose one over the other? I'm going to give you my thoughts on this right up front on which one is better. If you aren't switching fuel, it really doesn't matter. And I'll explain that. If you learned with Lambda, then continue to tune in Lambda. If you learned with AFR and that's what you're comfortable with, cool. Then continue to tune in AFR. And that is acceptable if you're not switching fuels. The problem with ethanol, though, is you never know exactly what you're going to get at the pump or even when it's mixed at a, you know, from a, uh, a fuel distributor that's, that's giving you race-type ethanol fuel. So what is switching fuel meaning? If you tune and you run E10 pump gas normally on your regular everyday tune, like on a street car, but then you switch to E85 or 16, C16 at the track, that would be switching fuel. You're changing different types of fuel, and they have different stoichiometric ratios, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. So speaking of fuel, how do we know the content in the fuel is what it says it is? And I did a short video on ethanol content and pump gas and a simple test on how you can test it to see how much uh, ethanol is in the fuel. It's very, very simple. It's very, very inexpensive. And if it's in a daily driven car, it may be a little bit of a pain to do. But uh, if you're on a track driven car, it's a really, really simple tool to use before you uh, dump the fuel in the car. So check out that video for sure. But let's first talk about wideband O2 sensors and O2 sensors in general. A narrow band O2 has a zero to one volt range in it, zero to one volts. That means, or that type of narrowband O2 only reads above and below stoic. It's a very simple system that the factory setup uses because that's all the factory setup cares about is running at that stoichiometric ratio to get the most fuel economy. It's the only condition it cares about. So if it's higher or lower, it's just going to adjust fuel and timing till it gets back to that preferred ratio. So that's all it cares about. Is it above or is it lower? And then what does it need to do to correct that? There is no tuning assistance. You can't make any tuning judgment on a narrow band O2 sensor. It's just not available. There's not enough information. A wide band O2 sensor operates from a zero to five volt range. And in that output signal that you get, you go from 10.0 air fuel ratio up to a 19.0 air fuel ratio. And that allows you for more accurate tuning when you're using a wide band O2. So that's why when you see, you know, in EFI kits or aftermarket stuff uh, or people talking about why they need a wide band O2, that's the reason why there's more range in there and you can get a more accurate reading of exactly what your engine is doing. So you know where it's at. So you'll know how to tune based on, what that air fuel ratio is getting spit out the back. So stoichiometric ratio and O2 sensors are very critical. It's, it's how you do all the tuning, a narrow band. You can't do it. Wide band O2 sensor. You can do it. Now let's talk a little bit about what that O2 sensor is reading downstream of the engine. When combustion happens in the engine, all the fuel and air typically is not burned. Now, in a perfect situation, in a perfect environment, you are burning all of the fuel and all of the air that ent enters into the combustion chamber. What is spit out of that is just the exhaust. An O2 sensor will read that. It'll read how much air is in, in the exhaust and how much fuel, unburned fuel, is in the exhaust. If you've got too much air in the exhaust, it's a lean condition. If there is too much fuel, in the exhaust, it's a richer condition. So those are based on that stoichiometric ratio, that stoic. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Now, before we get into that, a lot of people will generally learn on AFR. I think it's just more commonly used. Lambda is getting a little bit more common. I think higher end tuners typically use Lambda exclusively, uh, but it, there's uh, still a ton of tuners that tune by AFR and there's nothing wrong with that. AFR is generally very easy to tune and very accurate on non-ethanol fuels because it's typically all the same. Ethanol fuels is where things get a little hairy um, based on what we talked about a minute ago, uh, being able to measure how much ethanol is in the fuel. And that's where Lambda shines and does a better job of tuning. And that statement makes, it makes a really big difference, the non-ethanol fuel versus ethanol-based fuel. 
AFR will vary based on what type of fuel that you use. So if you're using gasoline with no ethanol in it at all, 14.7 is stoic. E85 is a value or a ratio of 9.8. That is stoic. That is where everything is burned on the backside. E10, which is a lot of pump gas that people use anymore. I think just about everywhere has ethanol in the fuel, unless you've got a special pump that doesn't have the uh, the ethanol in it. E10 is about as close to pure gasoline as you can get. And typically that the common formula suggests that stoic is actually 14.1 to one instead of 14.7. So it's just something to keep in mind. If you're tuning on E10, that's fine. If you switch back to gasoline, just know that you're going to be a little richer. So 14.7 to 1 is stoichiometric, means everything is burned. All the fuel and all the air is burned and spit out the exhaust. Now, ethanol can vary in that what that ratio is, what that stoichiometric ratio is. Alcohol, methanol, diesel, pure gasoline, they all have different stoichiometric values, and you have to keep that in mind. That's why it's much harder to tune with AFR because you have to continually adjust what that stoichiometric ratio is based on the type of tuning you're doing. And it sometimes is a little bit more complicated. If you're only dealing with one type of fuel, pure gasoline, E10, E85, whatever it is, then it's a lot easier to, to deal with AFR because there's no math, there's no conversion that you have to do. So it's something to keep in mind. And that's the reason why a lot of people switch to Lambda because it doesn't matter what stoichiometric is or what type of fuel you're using, it's always the same value. One more quick note on O2 sensors is they require to be at an operating temperature to read properly of what's coming out the exhaust. So typically at startup, an O2 sensor will, will not read the, the right value until the O2 is warmed up. It's got a heating circuit inside uh, and allows it just to get up to operating temperature and then it'll start properly reading what the lambda value is or what the AFR value is. O2 sensors that go bad typically start to read lean when there's no load or you're just kind of under a cruising condition. So if you've already tuned for this and you're in AFR or lambda, it doesn't matter, and you start to show a leaner value um, in that condition, it's just something to keep in mind, just a little bit of trouble, you know, a little troubleshooting tip that the O2 sensor might be bad and uh, you might have to replace it. So uh, just something to keep in mind with it. O2 sensors are, are, are a sensor. They, they do go bad on occasion. It's just something to keep in mind. So just kind of watch it uh, in that, those conditions and you'll know right away if it's the O2 sensor, it's possibly bad. Now let's talk about Lambda and what, how is it different? Lambda, when it's referencing stoichiometric ratio, is always 1.0. Always. That is always stoic. Never changes. It's always 1.0 no matter what type of fuel you're using. So if it's E10, diesel, pure alcohol, whatever, it is always 1.0. You don't have to, you know, switch back and forth, you know, between fuels like you do with AFR where that ratio is going to change depending on what type of fuel you're using. So... It's always 1.0 Lambda, or a lot of people will just call it Lambda 1, which means you're at stoic, and you're at that perfect ratio of, of burnt fuel and air. Again, no matter what type of fuel you're using. So it's one of the major reasons why people will tune in Lambda, because it eliminates that little that possibility of, of making a mistake. It's always 1.0, doesn't matter what type of fuel you're using. O2 sensors typically read in Lambda, and they get translated back into, or translated over into AFR at an aftermarket gauge or in tuning software, or whatever. So, speaking of aftermarket gauges, really quick, um, some of them have the option to to display if they're a digital gauge. Typically, they'll either uh, or some of the dial gauges, I guess, uh, sweep gauges will do the same. Where it'll read in lambda or AFR. If you've learned in AFR and that's all of you, you know, that's fine. Um, tune in AFR. And then once you're done tuning in AFR and you're comfortable with it, switch the gauge over to Lambda and just kind of watch it. You'll you'll know your vehicle and where it kind of operates well and, you know, what the uh, value is for full power and all that. 
you know, data log in that just to get an idea of what Lambda looks like. Lambda, for whatever reason, gets kind of people get freaked out about it, but I think it's actually easier of the two because, like I said, the value is always the same, doesn't matter what type of fuel it is. So by switching over and, and kind of getting an idea of what Lambda looks like, you can kind of look, see what those values are under idle or hard acceleration, full boost, deceleration, um, hard braking, shifting, whatever. So it should just help you give you a little bit of better of a grasp of what Lambda is and what value, you know, your motor needs to be at for it. So let's talk about that really quick. On an NA motor, typically Lambda, I think I've, most of the target values that I tune in are 0.85 to 0.90 when tuning for full power. Um, that's kind of a rough estimate, but the AFR value of that, again, roughly is 12.5 to 13.5, 13.4, somewhere in there, 13.3. Uh, just give you an idea of it. On a boosted engine, you may be trying to tune for a range of 0.73, 0 0.74, up to 0.80 lambda when making full power. It's significantly richer on a boosted engine, but you're moving more air through it, so you need more fuel, obviously. So boosted uh, lambda, that 0.73 to 0.80, somewhere in there, and AFR is typically 11.0 to 12.0. Uh, you can get down lower than 11, but quite honestly, when you start getting lower than that uh, on an AFR, you're just dumping too much fuel through there and you end up killing a little bit more power than what you're actually making. So it's kind of where that ballpark range, that 0 0.7374 to 0 0.80 Lambda. Those are the values on those two different types of engines, NA and boosted and kind of how they translate over into AFR. So just some final thoughts on this. It, what should you tune in, AFR or Lambda? Well, you know what? It, I honestly don't know. There's no right answer for that. The right answer for me is Lambda. It's what I tune in primarily when I'm doing EFI stuff uh, on my carbureted junk. I still tune in AFR. So it's not like, you know, you have to tune in one and then everything else is wrong from there on. Um, it's really kind of what you're comfortable with. If you're really comfortable with AFR and that's who taught you how to tune in and that's what you know and understand the best then continue to tune in AFR. I feel that Lambda is much easier and it's a much more uh, easier theory and concept to grasp and so tuning becomes a little bit easier because there's not a lot of guessing. You know it's always 1.0. There is no other value. It doesn't matter what type of fuel you're tuning. 1.0 is always that stoichiometric value, and that's important to know because then all the other values underneath it are always going to be the same. Now, the target ratio may change just a little bit based on how much boost or how much fuel, uh, you know, ignition timing, all those other things, how much power you're making, but typically they're not going to change that much. So it's a very important little concept to understand. I want to talk about this before we got any deeper into any tuning stuff because it's certainly a, a, you know, something that you need to make a decision on going forward. Most tuning software, I think all of them anyway, SCT Advantage, HP Tuners, the two ones I primarily use, you can tune in Lambda on both of them, and I think probably all the other ones are the same as well. If you have any questions about this, and I know it can get a little bit confusing, especially on that AFR side, don't hesitate leave them down below i'd love to answer them for you the more you understand on this stuff the easier it is when you go to start to tune on your own which we're going to talk about here very quickly uh, in the next couple of videos i think are going to be more specific around how to tune and how to make small little adjustments and go out there and learn on your own without destroying something so anyway if you have any questions don't hesitate leave them down below i'd love to answer them for you Please like the video if you thought it was cool, you got something out of it, and for sure subscribe. And I appreciate you all watching, and, and uh, certainly we'll get back to you on the next video. Thanks.